Sponsored by Artlist. Oh, hey there, kids. I'm just trying to log on to the information superhighway. Oh, wait, that's Minesweeper. Martha! Hey guys, how are you all doing? If you're new here, welcome. My name is Crazy Ken, and this is the WOW Computer, valued at $1,300. Now, it's targeted for senior citizens, which is like a $60 billion market for accessories and hardware, and I'm sure there's people who are willing to pay the $1,300. So I've been tinkering with it a little bit already, but there's some things I haven't explored yet. So basically, I'm just gonna go over the company behind this thing, the hardware, and the software, and we'll also, of course, take it for a little test spin. So this was sold by Journey Health. They used to go by another name, but it appears that the product itself is made by Telekin. Everything from the software to the hardware looks identical when you compare the WoW computer to the Telekin computer. The only difference is the logo says WoW instead of Telekin. So I'm guessing Telekin licenses this stuff to other people. They can slap their logo on it, and Bob's your uncle or your grandpa. So hardware wise, I mean, it's plastic, kind of feels cheap, doesn't really feel like a $1,300 product. I was surprised that the touch screen, yes, it is a touch screen, is actually glass though. So that's a little bit better. Uh, not the greatest horsepower, basic specs, it has 32 gigabytes of flash memory, that's for storage, two gigabytes of RAM, Intel Celery, four core processors, Obviously no dedicated graphics, you know, your grandparents aren't gonna be playing, you know, World of Warcraft. Actually, they might be. Maybe that's what the WoW stands for. So on paper, those specs don't seem like they're worth $1,300, even with the touchscreen factored in, but I'm willing to bet the money is mostly going toward the software, because the software is the unique feature for this type of stuff. So the speaker, that'll be an interesting test. The website says stereo speakers with premium quality. Oh, I love marketing claims like that. We're gonna hear how good those speakers really are. Now, let's talk about the design here for a bit. It looks like an iMac. Everything from the chin to the thick black bezels to the rounded corners, the rounded corners are almost like the exact same radius. It has that kind of curved back to it. Even a power button on the back left. They even mimicked the vents. <laughs> the vents on this computer look just like they do on an iMac. I don't know why they felt inclined to mimic Apple's design so much. I mean, I know Apple has a lot of influence, but I don't know why these guys had to really copy it. Heck, even one of their older models is kind of reminiscent of the older iMac G4. So interesting design choices. I guess if you can't innovate, you just imitate. Again, a senior citizen's probably not gonna care. Software. So I haven't done a crap ton of exploring with this yet, but I wanted to poke around and see what this thing is running because I was guessing it's probably not a Windows system because that's more money the company has to pay for licensing. And it's definitely not a Mac because it just isn't. So I assumed it's running Linux, but I wasn't sure. I poked around in the open source software information and it looks like it is running tiny core Linux and there's a custom graphical user interface on top of it. So what's in the box? We have a keyboard, kind of lightweight and cheap feeling. Again, doesn't really feel like it fits a $1,300 product, but it's all USB. You can plug in your own keyboard if your grandma really cares. Uh, but yeah, not really a satisfying tactile feel, but the letters are big, which is good for impaired vision. So that part works. It also does come with a mouse. Again, kind of cheap feeling, but that's an option. Personally, I'm just gonna use the touch screen for the demo today because I think it's better for show. But yes, you can use a mouse if you wish. And I could also use the mouse with my <laughs> Computer Clan mouse pad. I was digging through my storage earlier. I made this in 2010 with the really old Computer Clan logo on it. I only made one. I never ended up selling them, so this is the only one in existence. It also comes with a bag of other things. So we'll take a look at this. You got some polishing cloths. Don't know if they're gonna be as good as Apple's $20 polishing cloth, but you know. It also comes with an ethernet cable, which is good because when I tried getting this thing online, it will not recognize my Wi-Fi. I don't know if it's due to the security settings or what, so we'll plug in through ethernet. And it also comes with a stylus, which I could probably actually just use this on my iPhone now. But yes, you can use the stylus on the touchscreen, but it does work with your fingers. 
Um, I've only gotten like one finger input to work. Not sure if it's multi-touch, but we can test that in a sec. Also, comes with a manual, which makes sense because if you're a senior citizen or something like that, and you probably don't have an internet connection or a way to get on the internet, you're not gonna have a digital manual. You need a physical one. So all the instructions are in here as well. So on the back, we do have two USB ports right there with the power button and the reset button and this adjustable foot. So you can adjust the viewing angle if you wish. And there's more ports out the bottom right there. It looks like we have HDMI, VGA, four more USB ports for a total of six. The website said eight, but they lied. It's six and there's our ethernet, audio in and audio out as well. Now let's really dive into the software. You know what that means. Time to boot this baby up. Let's go. American Megatrends, all right. It's the older logo, but they only just recently changed their logo. And there's the Linux thing. So that's uh, letting us know this is indeed a Linux system confirming what we talked about earlier. There's our Telekin boot logo. I, I seriously had no idea what this was at first, but I tweeted about it and you guys helped me figure it out. Uh, this thing does take quite a while to boot. Still waiting. <laughs> um, senior citizens got time. Okay, so that banding right there, that's a bit of an indicator of what kind of graphics performance we have going on or whatever that issue is. The WoW computer, there's our branded startup screen. There's some debris or something that's stuck between the actual display and the glass. So in that air gap, there's some debris there and there. Well, not exactly something you wanna see for a $1,300 valued product, but we'll move on. Here's the home screen and software wise, I don't think it's that bad. It's certainly more tailored for seniors, obviously. So big graphics, simple layout, kind of takes me back probably about 15 years in terms of UI design with like this gloss and stuff. But hey, senior citizens aren't gonna care about that, right? So it looks like we have a little picture thing here. And again, graphics performance, even just on a simple cross dissolve is really poor. So uh, not a huge fan of that. News quotes, notices, like from the IRS or something, and weather. So that's good, uh, basic stuff here. Quotes and trivia, don't cry because it's over, smile because it happened. I actually do like that quote, so that's very nice. Can we get other ones if we tap? No, okay, we can't. Well, anyway, so we have video chat, email, photos, calendar, contacts, weather. Um, I'm noticing the display is, is really bright and I'm sure that's good for senior citizens, I guess, but I can't seem to actually find any sort of brightness settings anywhere. So I guess the brightness is just fixed. I don't know if anybody knows how to change the brightness on this thing, let me know, but I can't find a way to change it. Now, I am curious about this help system and we'll see how good it is here. I do like the two different styles of scroll bar, you know, that's whatever consistency. I am noticing like there's no like windows, like you can't really like drag things around, which I guess makes sense because that might be too complicated for your average senior citizen. Uh, but it looks like, oh, hey, oh, hang on. I, yeah, you got like inertia scrolling there. You can see it's tearing though. I, like, I don't know if you can really see that over my transmission, but it's tearing just from scrolling in a basic window, which 1300 bucks. Okay, is there video? Let's have a look at what the videos are like. Okay, so. Hello, and congratulations on your new WOW computer. Thank you. We hope you're excited about this new experience. Okay, okay, hang on a second. The, the sound. The website said stereo speakers with premium sound. That sounded not very premium to me. That actually sounded pretty awful. It, it didn't sound like stereo at all. It sounds like there's only like one very low quality tweeter, a mono tweeter somewhere like in this part of the bezel or something. It sounds like shit. And I don't want to be overly picky, but if I'm a senior citizen and I have a hard time hearing as it is, I don't know how that's gonna help. <laughs> we'll power through this. So let's take a look at what some of their other tutorial videos might be here. It's so quiet and tinny. So we can turn it up at least, but it probably still sounds the tinny. Mouse is a useful device. It little, in the palm it's a little computer. louder, but it, gives you direct control of your computer it sounds bad. Is that on purpose? To the of the but it looks like we got games as well. Solitaire, Blackjack, Minefinder, Minesweeper, I guess without a copyright issue. Uh, yes, we will revisit that. I need to do at least one round of Minesweeper before we're done today. 
Let's take a look at, now I'm probably not gonna be video chatting with anybody because I don't know anyone else who like has this. I don't even know what the service is. Hang on, let's take a look. We could not automatically sign you into video chat. Try again. Okay, login or register. Login or register. Firmly grasp it. Why, it's not doing anything. This is, that must be why we're not shipping Windows 98 yet. Let's go to more. Let's see what's on more. Oh, hey, now we're talking. Okay, so we got media player, slideshow viewer, spreadsheets, right? Let's test out this keyboard. All right, let's see, what should we type? My favorite sentence. The duck swims on the lake. The duck may swim on the lake, but my daddy owns the lake. I guess it's not that bad. It's a bit soft. There's not really like a satisfying tactile like click or anything, but it doesn't really feel like it fits the class of a $1,300 product. Okay, file system. File systems are probably one of the more difficult things to learn on a computer. So let's see how they handle that. We'll do a save as. Kind of as I expected, it's a pretty simplified save box. It looks like, it looks like you can't even navigate out of the documents folder. So it forces you into the folder here. You can make more subfolders if you wish with pretty simple buttons and menus. We'll just call it duck and save. Document saved. Can't press return, gotta press okay. Okay, so there we go. That, that works pretty good, duck.odt. Let's go back to more here. CD player, CD DVD burner. You know, I noticed these are in here, but there's no optical drive built into the computer. So it must only be for if you hook one up. Not sure how many senior citizens just have an optical drive lying around, but I'm sure their grandkids do. Anyway, ooh, calculator. I love calculator. Hey, a little bit of skeuomorphism going on here. We got like some wood and some brushed metal. Okay, so this is amusing. Just um, the skeuomorphism, like the, this is kind of like what Apple used to do with the iPad and the Mac OS. They would actually make the address book look like a book and I'm amused that they're actually doing that in their software here. Okay, so what fun is a computer without the internet? Let's hop on the information superhighway for real. Let's try typing in an address. Let's go to the computerclan.com. Here we go. And there we go. It actually worked just fine. Again, we got that inertia scrolling. I'm pretty sure we don't. Oh shoot! Whoa, we do have multi-touch. Hang on. I did not think this thing would have pinch to zoom. <laughs> okay, I'm actually a little impressed there. <laughs> anyway, let's uh, let's see if we can download an image here. This is probably one of our more famous ones. Let's see if we can put this into the photo library. Download original. Cool. And we can. I, I guess uh, it just brings up a photo browser. It doesn't bring up like the normal file system. Just to try to keep it simple. Save it into favorite. <laughs> That is the most terrifying alarm sound I've heard in a while. File was saved. So now I'm guessing if we go to the home screen, we can maybe, oh, let's just go to photos here. Looks like there's some stock photos built in. Favorites. <laughs> Only two gigs of RAM. <laughs> I mean, in a Intel Celery. But uh, yeah, it, it actually worked though. And the display quality is pretty decent. Like it doesn't look fuzzy or pixelated or anything. So, you know, the graphics performance is so far pretty bad, but for static images, uh, the quality looks okay. Oh, that's funny, someone commented, wow. And we're on a wow computer, conspiracy. Okay, let's try video. So let's go back to the computerclan.com and we'll go to the YouTube channel and we'll just play my video right here. I mean, it seems like it's playing smoothly in the tiny window. Do I dare put it into full screen mode? <laughs> let's see how it handles that. Oh yeah. Oh, there we go. It's, it's kicking in a little bit. That's interesting how it turned on captions by default. I wonder if like the web browser told YouTube to do that. I mean, that makes sense for the market this computer is advertised for, so that's pretty smart. So it is a little laggy. It really can't handle the full screen video. It played okay in the tiny window, but again, I'm guessing a senior citizen's gonna wanna see things really big and you know, they're probably not gonna care if it's a little laggy, but it is a little disappointing that it can't even play a 1080p video in full screen at the proper frame rate for how much you're paying for this thing. But go back to the quick links. Games, all right, let's play some bowling. Oh, 404. Well, isn't that just the crap cherry on top of today? Okay, we'll get out of there. Let's see, we have some email options in here. Windows Live Hotmail, Gmail, Cox. I don't really like Cox. You know what? I still owe you that game of Minesweeper. Or, excuse me, Minefinder. All right, one game. Here we go. Let's see, new game. 
<laughs> Ooh, here we go. One round, whatever happens, happens. One, all right. So there you go, guys, the WoW computer, or really the Telekin computer with the WoW logo plastered on it, I guess. So, by the way, if you guys see any other kind of goofy or weird or obscure computers, and you think they'd be cool on the show, feel free to tweet me or send me an email. Heck, I found out about this because someone emailed me about it. And also, thank you again, Artlist, for working with me and sponsoring this episode. They provide a lot of the music I use for this show and some of the stock footage too. Their music is awesome. Just one subscription gives you access to so many things and you get unlimited downloads throughout the duration of your subscription. And if your subscription expires, you still retain the license to the music so you can still use that stuff in your other videos even if your subscription expired. They have music, sound effects, and stock footage, and they have different tiers depending on what you need. So I recommend trying them out. You can use my link in the description. And when you do that, not only are you supporting the Computer Clan, but I'll give you a few bonus months for free. So go ahead and check that out. And if you want to help me buy more of this goofy stuff to fiddle around with on the show, feel free to pledge to my Patreon. And in exchange, I will give you some awesome perks too. Thanks in advance for your support. And feel free to subscribe for more tech episodes coming out all the time. I love doing episodes about rare and retro tech, new tech, and of course, scam tech. And hey, if you like this episode, you know what to do. Thanks, and I'll see you next time. Catch the crazy and pass it on.